Hi, boys and girls. This is Mrs. Pearson, your elementary ELL teacher. Today, we're going to do an informative oral retell for Second Grade Journeys Lesson 10. And our anchor text is Jellies, the Life of Jellyfish. For this lesson, we're going to turn and talk. That means I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to think about your answer. Then you're going to pair up with a partner at home, or you can be my virtual partner. And then you're going to share out your answer in a complete sentence or sentences. So, jellies, is it fiction, literature, or is it nonfiction, informational text? Well, we know that fiction is literature, it's made up, whereas nonfiction has true facts. Fiction, you, can, you need to read in order. But nonfiction, you can read in any order. Fiction or literature entertains readers. Nonfiction teaches readers. Literature has illustrations. And information, informational has photographs. Literature has characters, setting, problems, and solutions. It tells a story. Animals, whoops. Animals can talk. It has a beginning, a middle, and an ending. Whereas nonfiction has text features, it has a table of contents, contents, photographs, a heading, charts, diagrams, labels, captions, index, and glossary. So jellies. The Life of Jellyfish is nonfiction. Nonfiction books teach us information and facts. Nonfiction is real. It has text features like photographs. Real topics might be holidays, animals, or sports. Fact. A fact is something that is true and can be proven. For example, here's a fact. There is a volcano located in Hawaii. Opinion. Something that is often vague and cannot be proven to be true. The best volcano is located in Hawaii. Millions. When you have millions of something, you have more than one million, which is a very large number. Number two, choices. Choices are things you have to choose from, decisions. Number three, drift. If you drift, you move slowly without a set direction. Drift. Number four, simple. If something is simple, it is easy and does not have many parts. Simple. Number five, weaker. When you are weaker, you have less strength than before. Weaker. Number six, wrapped. To be wrapped around something is to cover or twist around it. Wrapped. Number seven, disgusting. If something is disgusting, it makes you feel sick or gross. Disgusting. And finally, our last vocabulary word to review is decide. When you decide something, you choose what to do or think. Decide. So let's go over our learning target. I can tell the main topic and key details of the text jellies using pictures and words. Here's our second learning target. I can listen and take turns when I'm having a conversation about the text. Success criteria. That means how will you know you're successful at telling the main topic and key details of jellies? And how will you know you're successful at listening and taking turns when talking about jellies? Well, here's our steps to success. I will 
answer the talk about it questions. Number two, I will circle and say the author's purpose of the passage. Number three, I will say and match what the text is mostly about or the most important thing. Number four, say and match what the author wants us to learn. And finally, five, say and match one to two detail sentences to each retelling picture. Let's go over our turn and talk rules. Number one, eye to eye and knee to knee if you have a partner at home. Number two, first one person talks, the other person listens. Number three, then the next person talks, the other person listens. Number four, do not talk too long on your turn or your partner will not have time for to have a turn. So you may agree with your partner or myself, Mrs. Pearson, and you can say, I agree with you because, and tell me why, or you may disagree. And as, it's okay to disagree as long as you are respectful. You can say, I disagree with you because, and tell me why. So, we have a picture of a mangrove jellyfish. And here's our first question. How would you describe this jellyfish? What do you notice? So you can say, I notice this jellyfish is. So what do you notice about this jellyfish? I notice this jellyfish is. Well, I notice this jellyfish is big, round, it looks a little puffy, it has big tentacles, it's white, it almost looks squishy. How are jellyfish different from other animals? So if you notice, we have our vocabulary word choices and decide, and there's a picture over here with a no symbol. So how are jellyfish different from other animals? Jellyfish are different because, and tell me why, how are they different? They are different because, well, jellyfish are different because they don't have a brain or a heart. So they don't think, they don't have to make choices or make decisions or decide things. So here's our next picture. It's the rhizostone jellyfish or rhizostone jellyfish. And here's some vocabulary words, drift, millions, and some, some arrows going up and down, and SpongeBob getting stung by a jellyfish. So what is our question? Number one, how do jellyfish move from place to place? How do jellyfish move from place to place? So you can say jellyfish move. Well, jellyfish move by drifting and they either they go either up or down. How do they protect themselves? They protect themselves by, or they protect themselves with, how do they protect themselves? Say it out loud. Well, they protect themselves by stinging people or th animals that get too close. They have millions of little cells that sting other creatures. Next retelling picture, it's the moon jellyfish. What three things do jellyfish need to have? What three things do jellyfish need to have? 
So you can say jellyfish need number one, number two, number three. Well, if you remember from our text, jellyfish need a mouth, a bell-shaped body filled with water, and tentacles. That's what makes them jellyfish. And number two, do you think moon jellyfish is a good name for the jellyfish in the picture? And why do you think it's called that? You can say, I think it's a good name because, or I think it's a bad name because, and tell me why. Well, I think it's a good name because it's shaped like a crescent moon. It reminds me of the moon shape. So why do you think they call it the moon jellyfish? I think it's called that because, I think it's called that because, Well, I think it's called that because it's shaped like a crescent moon. It reminds me of the moon shape. So again, we've got the vocabulary words choices, decide, and drift. And this picture has the golden mustigias jellyfish. So do you think jellyfish are beautiful or disgusting and why? So do you think jellyfish are beautiful or disgusting and why? So you can say, I think jellyfish are because Well, I think jellyfish are beautiful because they're um, all different. They can be different colors, different shapes. They can be big, they can be small, and they're very interesting to look at. Some are clear, some are not so clear. So describe a life, the life of a jellyfish. Describe the life of a jellyfish. What does a jellyfish do all day? So you can say jellyfish. They also Well, jellyfish don't have brains or a heart. So they just drift along, and if food comes near them, they eat it, and if it doesn't, they don't. They don't need to make choices or decide anything. Um, so they eat, they drift, and they have babies. So why did the author write the text jellies? Well, it's as easy as pie, or p i. E, each letter in the acronym PI, stands for something. The author wrote the text to either persuade, P, and persuade means to convince the reader of a certain point of view, or the author wrote the text to inform, I, for inform, to teach or give information to the reader, or the author wrote the text to entertain. E for entertain, to hold the reader's attention, um, to hold the attention of the reader through enjoyment. So P-I-E, persuade, inform, or entertain. Main idea. The main idea is what a text is mostly about. Look for the title and pictures. Sometimes the main idea is in the first and last sentence of the paragraph or the story or the book. And look for clue words repeated over and over. 
So let's retell jo jellies using this graphic organizer and sentence frames. So we're going to start out. The author wrote the text to either P, persuade, I, inform, or E, entertain the reader. Did the author write the text to persuade you that jelly jellies are the best creatures in the ocean? Or did the author write the text to inform you about the life of a jellyfish? Or did the author write the text mostly to entertain you about a funny story about a jellyfish? Well, the author wrote the text to mostly inform the reader. You could also say the author partially wanted to persuade you that jellyfish are not disgusting and that they are interesting creatures. But the author mostly backed up her thinking with facts about jellyfish or jellies. So it's mostly about the lives of, what is the text mostly about? It is mostly about the lives of jellyfish or jellies. Here are four details or facts that support the main idea of the passage. So we're going to talk about four details that support the main idea, which is the lives of jellyfish. So first, what did we learn about jellyfish? Well, first, jellies don't have to decide where to go or what to do because they don't have a brain. They don't have to decide where to go or what to do because they don't have a brain. Second, what else did we learn about jellyfish? Well, jellies can only move up and down. They protect themselves with millions of tiny cells that sting. Third, how is a jellyfish shaped? Or what's a, what are the parts of a jellyfish? Well, third, some people think the jelly's bell-shaped body looks disgusting. Jellies also have a mouth and tentacles. So they have to have a bell-shaped body a mouth and tentacles. But some people think the jelly's bell-shaped body looks disgusting. Other people's, like the author, doesn't. Fourth, what do we know about the life of a jellyfish? Well, jellies can be big and small. They can drift, eat, and have babies without a brain or heart. So in conclusion, the author wants us to learn about how jellyfish live. All right, now it's time to reflect on how you did on telling the main topic and key details of the text jellies using pictures and words. Would you give yourself a four? I could teach this lesson. I easily answered the questions and retold the main idea and four important details of the text, including what the author wants us to learn. Or three, I was able to answer most of the questions and retold the main idea and three details about the text out loud. Or three, two, I was able to answer some of the questions and retold the main idea and two details out loud. Or one, I was not able to answer the questions and did not retell the main ideas or details out loud. How do you think you did? Four, three, two, or one? Well, boys and girls, thank you for, whoops, sorry. Thank you for retelling the main idea and key details of the story or the text. Have a great day.